The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Howdy, Aguilan, and welcome back to the KME Studios. My name is Hector Nino, and you're listening to The Heart of Art. Today, we have a very special show planned for you. Our guest today is Wendy Wright, and she is a painter with a focus on nature and wildlife. She is also the manager of the High Containment Laboratory here at Texas A&M and currently has her work displayed at the Lights Out Texas Exhibition, uh, open right now at the Reynolds Gallery at the MSC up until September 13th. So go ahead and check it out uh, if you have the time. After which, we will be revisiting my interview with Brent Maxwell, who is an oil painter on canvas with a focus on Texas nature. So we have both artists that are focusing on nature, um, and he is also a former art teacher for the College Station ISD, and was actually an art teacher for 26 years. So he has a lot of experience and uh, I hope you enjoy that conversation. Uh, and now for my art announcements, I'd like to give you guys the email, uh, theheartofart at tamu.edu. If you know of any artists or uh, if you are an artist yourself that would like to be on the show, please email theheartofart at tamu.edu. Or if you know of any art events that are going on here locally that you would like to hear announced on the show. For more people to hear. All right, let's start my interview with Wendy Wright, the nature and wildlife painter. Hi, Wendy. How are you today? Hi, Hector. I'm great. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so excited for a conversation today. Um, and I wanted to start off by highlighting that exhibition, Lights Out Texas, that I attended last week. Can you explain what your work there is and what is the message behind it? Absolutely. So um, Lights Out Texas is a statewide campaign, and it's raising awareness about how light pollution is affecting birds. Um, particularly migratory birds, they're vulnerable because, you know, they use the moon and the stars to sort of navigate. And when they pass over cities, those artificial lights can confuse them and cause some disorientation. Um, this can cause them to collide with buildings or windows. And um, it's directly related to the light pollution. Um, Texas is located right in their flight path um, for a lot of migratory birds. So we have about 2 billion of them that pass through every year. And um, one simple thing that we can do to sort of help them is just turn lights out at night. Um, and, you know, this will help protect them on their journey through. Right. Um, so it, it's a big collaborative project with a lot of different people. And um, I was interested in painting birds, and I reached out to the University Research and Teachings Collection and asked if I could take a closer look at those specimens. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I sort of learned about this initiative, and I was like, hey, I'm going to paint some of these specimens and help talk about this message. And they were lovely and included me in that art show. And um, I'm just so excited to be a part of this really important project. Right. I mean... I love the intersection of like science and art, and I feel like that exhibition displays perfectly like that wonderful um, harmony. And I think it also um, has to do with your art as well, and you're like a scientist that does art. So I love that comparison there. Um, but I did want to talk about your piece there called Disappearing Act. Can you explain what that is? Sure. Um, so it's actually... Um nine different birds and they're really small paintings um i had picked out um well i had read a lot of the scientific literature and picked out some of the birds that were most affected by the artificial light and collide with buildings and um they picked those specimens out for me and i came in there and looked at them and just got to get a real close-up look of them and i brought my sketchbook in and um, drew them for there 
each specimen had a little tag attached to them with where they were collected and their location and some other information. And so in my artwork, I included that, but then I also like put a little bit of information about, you know, the lights out and why that's important and how light pollution is affecting them. So you can go in there and you can look at the art um, and also learn some really important information. And I, we ended up going with nine because that would fit in like a nine pane window. So mm -hmm. when it, after this exhibit, it's gonna travel around to some of the Autobahn centers and we're oh. gonna put it in an actual window frame. Awesome, so windows yeah. and then, yeah I, yeah, I see I see what you're doing there, <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, well, thank you for that and thank you for your cooperation with that. I think that's really important for uh, our audience to hear. Um, so I, I'd like to go into your background now before we get to your art. So sure. uh, where are you from and were there a lot of birds there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, so I uh, grew up in southern Wisconsin. Um, in a town that was sort of surrounded by prairies and farming communities and rolling hills. It's pretty picturesque and, and wow. beautiful. And um, my grandparents were dairy farmers. Um, we had, a, she had a big farm, my grandmother did. Um, there was lots of birds and she would plant like things that would draw them in and create habitats for them. And so yeah, we wow. did observe a lot of birds there too. Huh. So um, do you know what came first, like your love for the animals or your love for art? Um, I'm pretty sure it was nature and animals first. Hmm. And then as I got into my school years, um, I really loved science because animals were a important component of that. Right. And um, a lot of times they would give you like, journals to go out and document your observations and they're mm -hmm. like hey illustrate that if you want and that was such a peaceful experience for me to go out and just sit in nature maybe draw a plant and label it and mm -hmm. scientific illustration really became an interest to me at that point right awesome um, I mean, later on, you went to the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where you studied anthropology. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, uh, why choose anthropology? Oh, well, I had a really deep interest in people and places and culture and how everybody sort of interacts with their environment and different religions and myths and stories and folk tales and that sort of thing and so that's yeah. what really drew me into anthropology right um i mean that's interesting because then you went on to actually here at texas a&m to get your master's in ecology and conservation biology <laughs> um what was that jump like from like anthropology to something so science oriented <laughs> Well, um, you know, I guess in anthropology, a lot of my focus was biological anthropology. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. um, so the study of humans and human disease in, in past and present communities. Okay. And so it wasn't a huge jump, but what was different is um, in ecology, we were really looking at the health of environments and maybe how that affected the health of the surrounding communities. So mm -hmm. it was like a little bit more of a holistic approach. Right. And why did you choose Texas A&M for your master's? Um, well, I had been working here a oh, long time okay. already. Yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. Um, okay, so was it right after your master's that you started working with the high containment laboratory? Or was that something No, else? it was before, actually. Okay. Um, I just decided to go back to school while I was doing that. And um, mm. I have a group of wonderful people that I work with that are very supportive and um, allowed me to go back to school and pursue another thing that I was interested in. So. Awesome. Um, and what do you do at the High Containment Lab? I know you can't discuss everything, but um, just like a big oh, picture. Yeah, sure. So um, I manage all the High Containment Labs on campus. Um, mm -hmm. And essentially, so I work for the Division of Research and um, my primary duty is biosafety. Um, so I do biosafety for any lab that works with high consequence pathogens. Mm -hmm. These pathogens are things that are infectious to people, plants, or animals, or all of them. And wow. so it's important work. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like cutting edge of the <laughs> technology right here happening at Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, I love that. All right, you guys, we will be going on a quick break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back.
Okay, well, now I would like to segue into your art. Okay. Um, and what kind of paint do you use? Um, I pretty much use acrylic for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that medium because it dries really quick. Mm. And I'm very busy all the time. So I have a full-time job. I have all these interests and hobbies. I actually have three children as well. Oh, wow. And yeah. so... Um, Acrylic is great for me because I can paint really fast and it'll dry and I know that it's safe. Right. Um, I do love oil, so I am working with that as well. It's just that the drying time is a lot longer right. and I don't have a whole lot of time. <laughs> so I do those occasionally. Yeah. Right. So for your layering, you, you need it to dry fast. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, how do you select the specific species uh, of birds or plants that, that you paint? Um, well, it, diff it it just varies. A lot of times, I like to travel a lot. We camp a lot as a family. And so we go out and we observe nature. So a lot of times, I'll just get an idea for something based on our travels and mm -hmm. our time spent in nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you take a picture of this? Or is it more of like a mental? I do take pictures, lots of really? pictures. Mm -hmm. And um, then I sort of think about what I want to paint and a lot of times I'll use multiple pictures hmm. to sort of create the idea that is in my mind. All right, cool. So f from different angles and yeah. things. Yeah. So sometimes that works out great and sometimes, you know, my bird doesn't look so great because I've tried to put together three different images. But what oh. I can say, you know, after working with some of the specimens mm -hmm. in the, the collection, um, I've just got a much better understanding of, you know, those details, like how feathers are, like how beaks look, how feet look, um, mm. just the anatomy in general. And I think I've seen a lot of progress in my art because of that. Right. I mean, one of the questions that I was going to ask was, um, what challenges do you come across when painting these? And I think one of those is um, having the need to like see it up close in order to be able to, to paint it. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would suppose, um, so this, I love that uh, you were able to surpass that. Now, um, yeah. do you have any other challenges that you see? Oh, um, yeah, but art is something that is relaxing and fun for me. So I mm. tend not to dwell on those and I just have fun with it. Right. I don't want it to become stressful. Exactly. Um, and so if I start to have find a project is challenging, I'll put it aside and start something new. <laughs> And that might not be the best thing because then I can have 10 things going at once right. sometimes. But I find that if I just step away for a little bit and do something else, then the solution to those challenges will come to me and I can come back to it and take it in a different direction or paint over it, you know? Right. Um, yeah. You'll come back with a different mindset. Yes. Yeah. A different yeah. solution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very valid. How do you balance your work life with your social life? I know you have three kids and then your art life. Like, how, that's a lot to juggle. It is. And um, I'm just so fortunate to have a wonderfully supportive family who mm. also love art. Um, it's something that we all sit down together and work on together. Um, oh, really? And so it, it's just wonderful. We, we really enjoy that time together. Right. I mean, apart from like learning skills, you're also uh, spending time as a family and yeah. growing together. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. And sometimes we just have fun with it. Like there's one night that we decided to draw caricatures of each other. Oh, wow. And there was so many laughs because, you know, it was really funny to see how each kid thought of me and like right. their maybe interpretation that, yeah it was so fun we all had lots of laughs that night oh wow I, yeah. that's a great suggestion i mean for any anybody in the audience member that's looking for something to do on the weekend with their family yeah yeah draw caricatures of each other it was fun yeah it'll be fun it'll, it'll bring out a lot of laughs for sure <laughs> are there any cultural or symbolic meaning behind your paintings or besides the conservational message or uh yeah sometimes mm -hmm. um I think that, well, this is sort of on conservation, but in the conservation world, things can just be gloom or doom all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I just want to paint things that are, are happy, like birds doing what birds do in their happy place, living their best life, you yes. know, um, <laughs> to sort of bring hope and joy to other people, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I think of birds and 
I mean, I grew up in a religious household, so it, it kind of brings me back to that passage where birds are always taken care of. They always have the food they need. And um, I, I love that there's that message of like hope behind the birds yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, what are some of your artistic inspirations early on? Early on. Um, well, I'd say probably my grandmother and that mm. farm. That right. was such a wonderful time. Um, it was a huge place with lots of things to explore and a lot of trouble that you could get into, too, you know. Um, but there was just so many, like, hidden treasures. You know, you're not supposed to be in the hay barn, but you would sneak in there when no one's looking and maybe find kittens behind a bale of hay. And it was just like, oh, this is the greatest, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would draw a lot of those hideaway in places and just draw in there. And my... Um, grandmother she was very supportive of of that and mm. um, saw that I loved art bought me art supplies um, she also had these really cool books they were older from like the 60s I think they were called the high the how and why books mm. of wonder and there was a lot of scientific illustrations in there and um, yeah it was just teaching you a little bit of everything about everything and um, she mm. really fostered that sort of development and inspiration in me yeah, I mean, yeah. I think grandmas do have a, a big impact like that. Yeah. I, I've come across a couple artists in which their grandma was like their biggest supporter. So yeah. I love that. Uh, my parents were too, though. They were, mm-hmm. they're great. And they're still really supportive. They love it. They try to come to all my art shows. Oh, wow. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> um, are there any like artists that you could give some credit to for your inspiration? Like any um, current artists? Current? Oh, gosh. I I love all art, so I just I'm mm. always following trends in art and, and people. Um, maybe not anybody in particular, but I can say that um, in my family there were some artists, and I would see these paintings hanging on the wall as a kid, and I would be like, oh, I want to paint like that someday. Mm. And um, you know, one of them was a great grandfather, and another was. It was three greats grandmother it was there were paintings from the 1800s and i just thought they were so beautiful and mm-hmm. um i was like hey it runs in the family and i want to paint like that someday right so. wow awesome why do you focus on realism or making it as real as possible is that a goal for you even no not really no. um in some things mm-hmm. yeah um i think i go that way sometimes and then a lot of times I'll take a break from that and just do contemporary things and right. paint with really bold colors and um, paint from imagination more than the pictures that I've taken mm, right. um, so I've got a good mix of both and I think right now there's a lot of realism because of the birds mm-hmm. um, preparing for a really large solo show that features all birds right so yeah. <laughs> totally. I mean, yeah, one of the ones that stuck out to me on your Instagram was one of, um, like, an old truck, and it looked like oh, watercolor. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah sometimes I um, will experiment with watercolors in, like, a travel journal. I mm-hmm. That's one of the time management things, right? So I always carry water, like, travel watercolors with me and really? paper, and a lot of times I'll sketch stuff out with my watercolors and my watercolor pencils right. before I go and paint them in acrylic or oil. Um, wow. And so, yeah. That's I pretty just smart. <laughs> see those, and watercolor is pretty quick and easy to travel with, too. So, mm-hmm. And then there's a lot of freedom in there. I'm not stressing out about the way things need to look. Right, yeah. yeah. You're just putting on paper your thoughts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Where do you see your art evolving into? Um, well, I would continue, like to continue just conveying this message of every encouraging people to be curious about the world that we live in and raise awareness about issues and just small changes that we can make um, and work together to make it a better place for all of us. Um, Yeah. So you wish that your art continues to make an impact in our conservation and ecology? Be impactful and just, yeah, encourage people to learn more and and chase Mm -hmm. after their curiosities, you know? Yeah, I love that. Um, is there anything about art that you want to relate to our audience uh, or about your art that we haven't spoken about yet? Um, yeah, I don't think so, other than maybe the bigger upcoming show that mm-hmm. um, 
I have been preparing for for three years wow. is all about birds. So we're kind of going back to birds again. Um, mm -hmm. But in October, um, I'll have a show here at Day Gallery. Um, okay. And it's meant to be interactive. And again, I've focused on birds in their happy places. But um, I created it with the intention that a viewer can go in and interact with each piece and sort mm -hmm. of learn about that bird and what it does in each environment and you know how it was built for that and um, threats that it faces currently and if there's anything that we can do to help it um, yeah awesome I yeah. love once again that intersection of science and yeah. art yeah I love that um, all right well if people want to check out your work where are some places available or an Instagram that they can access oh sure yeah I do have an Instagram um, I'm at WL Wright underscore fine arts mm -hmm. um, but locally I live in a wonderful community that's very supportive of, of the arts mm -hmm. and um, if you're in downtown Bryan you could go to Tavo Coffee Company and see some of my work there along with a lot of other great artists mm -hmm. you could go to love downtown local I have a spot in there and uh, just a little wall where you can see a lot of um, my some prints and some originals right, and they and recently opened right? yeah they're yeah. very new so mm -hmm. definitely get out there and check them out they have over 75 artisans that are oh, wow. part of the community and um yeah i'm developing a lot of new relationships with people because of that i think yeah, that's, that's wonderful great. and then um pothead's plant shop she um the owner there has a meet your local maker and she just supports local artists and lets us sell our work in her shop so. All right, great. Yeah. Well, I encourage everyone to go check these places out if they can. Um, and Wendy Wright, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us about your art and your message behind it. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me. Of course, anytime. Now we will be listening to a recap of my interview with Brent Maxwell, the oil painter on canvas with a focus on Texas nature. Uh, we have a guest here. His name is Brent Maxwell, and he is mainly an oil painter on canvas with a focus on Texas nature. And if you'd like to check out his work, you can go to jbmaxwellart.com while we're having this discussion. And that's jbmaxwellart.com. So, hi, Brent. How are you today? Hey, Edgar. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. And actually, uh, an important detail is that, that Brent actually just told me about is that he was a teacher to Shelby Lancaster, who was early on in the show. So that's an interesting little detail that I hope we get to talk about a little more. Um, but here on the show, I'd like to go through the background of my guests before we start. So I know that you're a native Texan, born in Corpus Christi, but where were you raised? Uh, I grew up in Odessa, Texas. Okay. It's way out there. Mm -hmm. And did that impact your art in any way? or uh, Not so much uh, impacting my art at that time as I was growing up because mm -hmm. it was pretty flat and to be fair, it was pretty bleak. Uh, yeah. Mostly, I got excited about things when I left and moved to places that had trees and water and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be the biggest uh, impact it had. Having gone back now, there are a lot of things in West Texas that I have learned to like uh, and have learned to uh, appreciate through other artists uh, in early Texas art, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good things there. All right. And was that where you started your art career? Like, um, did yes. you have any important teachers in Odessa that really led the way for you to become an artist? Yeah, I uh, started, you know, like a lot of kids, you know, drawing cartoons and things like that, mm -hmm. drew airplanes and submarines and all that sort of thing, trying to get the perspective. Uh, did a lot of cartoons for people that, uh, you know, had some funny incident they wanted illustrated. And I said, yeah, sure. Um, but uh, I actually started in uh, college, Odessa College. Barry Phillips was an uh, instructor I had out there, Delmos Hickmott. And they were both very good. And uh, they encouraged me and challenged me. And, you know, I, I did pretty well in their drawing classes. And uh, they, it, it became where I like to be more than other classes. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of self-selected uh, into art class. Yeah, you felt yourself gravitating more towards yeah. those. Yeah. So would you say that um, being in college is that moment that you realized that you wanted to do this for your life? Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was at Odessa College. Uh, Odessa College, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want to be like that guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the art kind of developed. You kind of develop your skills and get better at it. And you go, you know, I can do this, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, you went on to get your BFA and your MFA from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, I was curious, what was your MFA on? Painting. Painting, okay. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I did, in those days, I did um, work that rec- uh, focused on materials. Uh, I did, like, I would weave canvas into a chain link fence material, stretch it, p- put it on the wall, apply a lot of really thick uh, acrylic type paint and uh, you know left ribbons of ca- you know the canvas that hanging down and it was you know all real nice it was just uh, you know it was hard to install oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah and so a lot of people you know probably did not think of that as a uh, positive feature but uh, anyway that that's that's what I did in uh, uh, grad school there all right. And, I mean, after that, you went into teaching at public schools. Uh, did you enjoy teaching, or were you just waiting until you could do oh, it? Oh, I love teaching. I yes. love teaching. Okay. Uh, I, I want to back up, though. You left out about 10 years of my life there where I oh, worked yeah. in construction. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I did you, not know about that. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did a lot of construction, and uh, hmm. uh, mostly electrical construction. Uh and uh, you know, I worked all over. I worked all over the Austin area. Did summers in uh, the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska, and uh, you know, I did a lot of stuff. And so, you know, physical nature of painting and, and you know, like I say, the chain link material and all that kind of stuff, mm. uh, stuff you could put your hands on and work with. Uh, you know, I like that a lot. So, now back to the teaching. Enjoyed teaching art history more when I got the AP classes at mm. uh, college. It consolidated in. Uh, College Station, and that was a, that was a real good experience too. I like that a lot. All right, awesome. Um, so a little more about your art. I know that you focus on nature. Mm-hmm. What was that place that got you hooked on nature, and you wanted to paint that? That would be um, Cathedral Mountain. That's out south of uh, Alpine, Texas, and we have uh, my wife and I have friends who um, own a ranch out there, and take it out there, and there's this mountain. It's called Cathedral Mountain, hmm. and uh, it's, as mountains go, it's not a, a really big mountain, but anywhere you go on that ranch, that mountain is looking over your shoulder, and um, it has a very unique look to it, almost almost an identifiable face, and it's the, the, the people that own the ranch, uh, there's three siblings that uh, own the ranch, uh, they're really proud of you know their access to this mountain and so they were nice enough to let me have access to it so i'm hector nino and you've been listening to the heart of art a production of 90.9 kamu fm you can find all of our shows anytime at kamu.tamu.edu The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu.